Hey everybody, I'm going to try out my new grown-up internet tonight. We've got storms coming in overnight, so I thought I'd get a little bit of a head start and not do the entire thing on video, but I am working on the bunny holder. You guys have requested a video for this, so I'm going to get it done. I did go ahead and get a head start, and I'm stitching the ears out right now. Um, I am on the last step, which is the satin that goes almost all the way around the ears. So I'm going to let this finish stitching out. It's going to be a little bit noisy, but while I am stitching that out, I just want to show you guys, I have my other pieces for the actual holder cut out. So I have a front and a back because this is a three hoop stitch out. The ears are stitched in the first hoop and you use tear away with those. And then the two holders, the one for the bunny face and the other one for the bunny butt, are stitched out. I prefer on cutaway. It just gives it a little bit more stability and you can't really take take it out of there anyway. Um, so I've got the vinyl for the front and the back of the other holders and I have the same vinyl that I'm using for the ears. I've got for the face and the butt. Now the tail is an applique. So on the tail I have just a white uh, this is a cotton craft dish towel, and I'm going to use that as just the fluff on the tail. I'm not going to dig out my fluffy minky stuff tonight and worry about faux fur or anything like that. But I am going to put a piece of this. Um, I don't know what you call this. I call it a mermaid tail, but it's a sheer fabric that it comes off of a bolt. It's really pretty. Joann's has it. Somewhere in the group I have a link for this, but... Um, it's really, really pretty. It's got a lot of shine and shimmer to it. It is transparent for the most part, so I'm just going to layer that over this white dishcloth so that I can give the tail some color. It's going to look really pretty over this and give it a little bit of shine. So, I'm going to let this finish stitching out, and then I'm going to come back and do another video in a few minutes. Hey, Penny Penny! I'm going to shut this one off now so I can, um, get my next hooping set up. Thanks guys. Hey everybody, we're back now and I did get another little bit of a head start. This is the, what will become the front cover of the bunny face and I've just done the outline stitch of the holder and I've done the placement for the two ears. So the ears are what I stitched out earlier and there is a little bit of a shape to them to show you what side goes where but if you look on the back side of the bunny ears I do have an opening at the bottom and that's just to cut down on bulk when you're attaching it to the face I did add a piece of that same white dishcloth in there just for a little bit of stability and a little puffiness in the ear when I stitched it out I trimmed the front of it out to the actual stitch line the back of it I only stitched to the bottom of the satin stitching which ended um I don't know, about a quarter of an inch below the, the uh, or above the bottom stitch line. So I'm going to secure the two ears in place. And it's kind of difficult to see, but you can probably see the little outlines here. I'm going to secure them in place with some tape. Line them up as best I can. They're going to stitch. And then we're going to add what will be the applique circle for the face itself. So the machine is going to stitch very well through the scotch tape and you can just be able to pull it off that way. I don't like putting pins in too many spots because I don't want to um, pull on the vinyl itself. I will put some more scotch tape at the top but if you can see I have a piece of tape here and a piece of tape there. It's kind of transparent tape but I'm going to go ahead and secure those down. Let me get me a little working space here just with a long piece of tape, I've got a long piece of tape, and I'm just going to go across the top of the bunny ears just to help hold them in place. This is going to keep them out of the way. This is going to keep them out of the way. They're not going anywhere. So now what's going to stitch is the tack down for the bottom edge of the ears, and then we're going to put the face applique on top of that. So let's go ahead and stitch this one out. I am going to watch it carefully just to make sure that it doesn't get caught on anything else. There we go. It's going to come over to the other ear now. And if you notice, I have my chopstick, not my fingers. 
So it's going to stitch there. Now what's going to come up next is the placement for the face. So I'm going to go ahead and let that stitch and that is also going to secure the ears down just a little bit more. And then we're going to use the same vinyl that I used on the ears. We're going to use that for the face itself. Okay, so that gave us a placement circle. I'm going to take my hoop off. And you can see that there is some stitching here. I can remove this scotch tape. It's going to be under the bunny face. So you could leave it if you want to. I just prefer not to have my needle go through that much scotch tape. Um, and it's going to be stitching some eyes and face details. So I just want to take off um, that scotch tape if I can. So let me peel that off there really quick like. And let's see. Some of this scotch tape sticks super crazy well on different vinyls and on other vinyl it doesn't stick very well at all but so I got for most of the tape off here I'm going to you can see the circle for the face is in the middle so I'm just going to attach this here it's going to do a tack down stitch and then I'm going to trim it out and it'll do the satin and the facial features and stuff like that in the next few stitch lines I am going to use a pen in each corner of this though, just because this is a bigger piece than just the uh, ear tips. And I can stitch, or I'm sorry, I can pin outside of the stitch line. So I've got it secured. I'm not going to go crazy with the pins. I don't need it. It's just going to run a an outline again of the face in that one spot. So let's let it do its little business here. And then I know this is an Easter bunny. So the bunny itself has a Easter egg for a nose with different colors. So I'll just grab a couple of colors of thread and do that. Okay. So now what's going to stitch, I don't know if you can see it, are going to be the eyes. So for the eyes, I am going to use a darker blue. This bunny is a blue bunny today. So not like the ice cream, but a blue bunny. So this is the thread color that I've been using. Um, I don't know if it's sim thread or bro thread, but I'd have to look, but that is the color number on it if anybody's interested in it. I am going to use a little bit darker blue for the eyes. So I have some Coates and Clark. I know that not a lot of people like Coates and Clark. I have no issues with it in my embroidery machine at all. I've tried several different spool sizes of it. I've not had any problems. I've been using it for about six years. I don't have a lot of colors of it. Um, Hobby Lobby used to sell it. They don't anymore. They have their Soology brand. So I do have some colors of Coats and Clark. Um, again, if your machine doesn't like it, then find something that it does like. But my machine does not give me any trouble with it. So let's go ahead and stitch the eyes out here. On a single needle, this is a lot of little tedious changing the thread color out. Um, if you are on a multi-needle, you can set up your uh, stitch assignments. I'm going to go ahead and pause that and get rid of that thread tail. Stitch assignments um, to your needle numbers before you even set the, the design up and probably walk away from your machine. I don't know that I would. Hey Deb, how are you? Well, you know, several people have asked for a video. This one is going to be probably in three different videos because you guys don't need to see the prep stuff. But I did the bunny ears really quick earlier. That's a very, very quick stitch out. It is similar to doing a key bob. You got a front and a back and a little bit of design in the middle. Um, I'm doing the face on this one now and then we'll do the butt on the other one. Uh, the face is where you merge the ears at. So I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I showed you that piece on video. When we're done with this, I'm going to keep my fingers out of the way um, because I'm going to trim around this piece when this is done. Um, I could have trimmed around it after the tack down stitch, but I want to give it a little bit more stability because I will be kind of tugging on it a bit and I just want to make sure that it stays in place and I don't trim it or get it out of round too much. Um, I'm, I'm going to pause that and get rid of that thread tail though. That is the other thing on my single needle. Does not trim. 
the threads, the jump stitches. Uh, my multi-needle does. A lot of single needles do, but I know you guys have probably heard me say this before. I like testing things on my single needle because if I can get it done here, I know you can get it done on better quality machines. Not that there's anything wrong with this one, but better quality machines or different brands or uh, especially on a multi-needle. So um, it is Friday night for me. I am in the central time zone in the U.S. Um, let's see, what time is it? 8.30 and we have some storms rolling in tonight so I'm going to get this one done and I'll probably go in the house for a while. I am in my she shed at the moment. So now I'm going to stitch the whiskers. So I'm going to pick a different thread color um, for the whiskers and I don't know if I want black or not but I may choose black, but I also have some other options. The vinyl that I'm using for the background is a retired vinyl, I think, from My Punk Broidery, and it's got these beautiful daisies on it. It's got some orange and pink and yellow and this kind of a sea foamy green color, which is, you know, like turquoise-ish, whatever. And the background of it is, it looks like white with some silver speckles in it. It's really pretty. The dark colors in it are like a fuchsia or a dark, dark orange. There's even some dark greens. So I think I'm going to choose one of the darker colors. I really like this one in the center of the flower. It's almost a honey brown, like a dark honey brown. I think that's the one I'm going to use for the, for the, oh yeah, that would go well. Uh, this is the Soology brand from Hobby Lobby. I love this brand. It works well in my machine. This is one of the only spools, other than the small sulky spools, that I use actually on this thread holder up here. Uh, I don't use that for much at all except these tiny spools. So I'm going to go ahead and thread those in and let this do the, let's see, here we go. Um, this is going to do the whiskers and the mouth at the bottom. And this is going to have some jump stitches in it. Again, my my single needle does not cut those. Um, let, let that get in its place for a second. I am going to move that long tail there and continue stitching. So... Um, it does not cut, so I probably will stop between the two sides when it goes to the mouth section. Um, if your machine cuts jump stitches, just know that I am jealous. Um, my multi-needle, I have a Janome MB7, so it has seven needles on it. It does cut jump stitches, but I don't know where my power cord is, or at this point, even my hoops for it. So. I'm waiting for Penny to come visit so she can help me find everything and get all organized again. But she hasn't shown up yet, her or Vicki for that matter. And I think they might even bring Denise when they come. Laura might want to come too, so, you know, we could have a big party if y'all would all just show up. Okay, so now it's going to stitch the nose in the middle. While this is up, I'm going to go ahead and cut those jumps just to get them out of the way um, because I tend to forget that they're there and may not remember to trim them later on. So there's a couple of small ones in between the two whiskers at the narrow part. Uh, I think it is raining. And if it's not, it will be soon. I told my husband, because I my shed is off to the side of the house a little bit, down the hill. So I told my husband that if I'm not back in the house by the time, I think I'm going to do this Easter egg in pink. Um, I'm not back in the house in time for it to quit raining, then he's going to have to come rescue me with, with the umbrella, I think. Um, I don't mind walking in the rain, but I've got my laptop and stuff with me, so... I guess I should have prepared a little bit more and brought the umbrella with me, but alas, hindsight is 2020. Um, all right, so let's get the nose done. This is one really cute little bunny. 
I have kept the holder that I made on my desk at work. I'm going to just trim that out of the way. Um, since before Easter, and it's still on my desk. I actually did just bring it home today so I could force myself to bring a different holder to work. Um, people that come in my office and look always want to know what I have behind my desk. Well, I have the bunny on one part of my desk, and then I have Seamus, our leprechaun, on the credenza behind my desk at work, and everybody thinks that he is just as cute as he can possibly be. I think he's Penny's favorite one. So what has been y'all's favorite of the napkin holders so far? Does anybody have one, or is there any other ones that you want to see that I haven't done yet? Um, the list is crazy, but I'm certainly happy to add to it. Alright, so I think I'm going to need probably two colors for the nose, and instead of doing that twice, I'm probably just going to use some variegated thread. I have this really pretty rich purple variegated thread. I think I'm just going to use this. It's purple and dark blue variegated thread. This again is one that I will use on the spool holder at the top. This is a sulky brand rayon. I don't know if you can see the numbers down there. 942-2205. A pic oh, you want me to do the picnic one? I have the one with the ants on it, Linda. Is that the one you're talking about? Is that your favorite? Um, let's see. I need to do one for my husband's fishing hole. I need to do one with a bass or something on it. You know, we got we got feeder minnows and bluegill in our pond a few weeks ago and the hatchery where we got them the guy said that the minnows are going to multiply like crazy so we keep walking out there every two or three days and seeing what we can see and i mean that's a three-quarter acre pond and they're tiny little minnows not not any bigger than my pinky finger so they're difficult to see but we do see them once in a while hanging around and um the bluegill tend to go in the deeper part of the pond, so we don't see them at the moment. Um, he said our pond will be ready for some uh, fingerling bass probably late next spring. He said let it go about a year and build um, the feeder fish base. Let your minnows multiply. There's tons of frogs out there already. Um, we've seen some cranes. And there's a couple of foxes that hang out and a lot of coyotes. So since this is variegated thread, I'm just going to let it do its little thing here. But it came out of the needle. So let's just fix that back. I'm not going to change it. But you could. This, the file is set up to change two colors of thread for the zigzag on the bunny nose. So I'm going to let this finish doing its little business here. And then I'm going to trim the face out because the next thing that it's going to do... Uh-oh. It pulled the thread out. The next thing that it's going to do is the... Um, let's see. Here we go. Um satin stitch around the face so I do have to trim this out before that happens otherwise it's just going to look like a hot mess when I try to trim it out after the fact cut off that little curly tail there the only drawback to these sulky these tiny little sulky ones is that the thread is wound so tight and so tiny on here that um Here we go. Um, that they are so curly that they get in the way. So I do need to hold that thread tail out of the way for a second. There we go. They get wound up around the needle guard. And there we go. They get wound up around the needle guard. So I'm just going to pop this out of here, trim it out, and then come back and continue the video, okay? Thanks, guys. Be back in just a couple minutes. Hey everybody, I'm back now, so we're going to do the bunny. Um, I did go ahead and get it lined up, trimmed out, and it is now sitting, uh, stitching the 
satin stitch around the bunny face. So it's also going to stitch that across in the bottom of the ears. So that's going to even further hold them in place and keep them stable for you. I did make sure to remove all the tape from the edge of the bunny ears because I didn't want that coming up my needle too much. So I think this thing is just really cute. So I'm going to revisit the bunny butt coming up while that's stitched out. So I already have my back cover hooped. Now my stabilizer is hooped and I have my vinyl pinned down pretty good. This is what I'm going to use for the back cover as well, just like the front cover. I have this piece that I'll use as the applique for the bunny feet and butt. The tail is going to be a piece of this white dishcloth with this mermaid fabric over it. I don't even know what the mermaid fabric is called. I may double it up just to give it a little bit more opaque uh, look so you can't really see the pattern of the dish towel. I only put the dish towel in there to give it a little bit of bulk. I didn't feel like messing with um, Minky or the faux, the faux fur tonight and dealing with all that mess, but we'll get to that part here in just a couple of more minutes when this is done. Um, I do have the back piece of this cover that when the bunny face is finished, I'm gonna add this to the bottom side of the hoop, secure it and stitch it out. I am really kind of proud of myself, you guys. I, hi Michelle. I actually was somewhat organized tonight. I had all my pieces cut, everything ready, everything lined up in order that I'm gonna be using it in. And well, that's a miracle because that never happens for me. Michelle, how have you been? I haven't seen you in here in quite a while. I hope you're doing okay. bunny. The other one I did, I believe, had a white bunny face, ears, and butt, and a fluffy tail with some um, furry minky kind of fabric. Um, that stuff's the devil to cut. Let me just say that. I have it, but I did not bring it out here. I was going to take and uh, bring it out here and show you pictures of it, but it's in the house already. But this one, I thought I would really use some of this really pretty, pretty fabric or vinyl from My Punk Broidery. Um, I wish that Amy could get these daisies back. She might have it, but I don't think so anymore. I'd have to look on the website. But I've got several rolls of it in my years old stash, so I'm going to I'm gonna use it on things like this that just, it makes it springy and it's pretty and it's lively. Hey Vicki, how are you? Miss Penny back in here yet? I've been talking about you guys coming up here to visit and getting me all organized. I keep waiting. One of these days, y'all are going to tell me you're on your way. So, let's see. Some of the other things that I have working. Um, of course, I do have some more covers coming for the bookends for this shape of napkin holder, but I also have some others coming for little square holders from Hobby Lobby. If you watch, I think it's every two weeks they put these on sale for $1.99, which is not as economical as the ones from Dollar Tree, but Dollar Tree doesn't sell this shape. Um, so I've been, I've gotten some of these as well. But I also have the bookends uh, that I got off of Amazon. So I'm going to make some more designs for the bookends. And, oh, let's see. Oh, there's quite a few other things. So I'm going to clean up some of these little stray threads across the back. Um, and they're just bobbing back and forth jump kind of threads on the back side. So totally your call whether you want to do this or not. This is going to be on the inside of your holder. I just don't want anything to get snagged and my luck, most of it would. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit and I am going to 
place this on here, secure it down, and I'll be right back with you. So all this is going to do now, I'm going to have to move the bunny ears down and out of the stitch line. I'm going to fold them over and tape them down. And that's going to stitch just on the arched section of the holder. It's not going to stitch across the bottom, otherwise you couldn't use it as a holder. So... If you're doing this in fabric, and you can do it in fabric, the instructions give you um, the option to do it in fabric, you would just double the height of your fabric. The width of the fabric is, you don't even need to make it any bigger than the, the hoop itself. So I've got it all secured on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back in and stitch that. Um, and then while that, Oop, I better move my ears out of the way. So my ears, I'm going to go ahead and tape them down. Uh, somebody said, why don't you just hold them? Yeah, I don't want that uh, opportunity for my, e my fingers to get caught on anything. So I am going to just tape them down out of the way. And really, you just need them out of the stitch line here on the top. Um, and I know you guys might think, if you haven't stitched one of these out yet, that that is too close to the stitch line. Well, it's really not. I will tell you, on my single needle, when the last stitch is done, the needle returns to center. So it could easily get caught on this. So what I do is watch very closely and stop it and just go one advanced stitch at a time until it's done. Or you can put a piece of Solvi on top because you can just take that right off when you're done and it will give your needle something to glide over. Or another option is you can put tape along that edge, which is what I normally do. Um, tape is a lot less expensive than Solvi. So I am just going to put a piece of tape over any edge that I think the needle might get caught on. I've done these, these holders a bunch of times, so I'm pretty good at gauging where the needle's gonna go. My needle is going to come from this corner, which is where the last stitch will be, and it's going to travel to the center right here. So I am going to slow it down. So on my machine, I do have a speed control, so I'm going to put that down to 500. Um, max on this machine is 650. I am also going to have my handy-dandy chopstick just to make sure that I don't get my fingers in the way of anything. Okay, so I've slowed it down, otherwise it'd be over here already. Um, now, if you watch, my single needle does not get caught on the ears as long as you pull them tight enough. You don't wanna warp your design, but you do wanna pull them tight enough to keep them out of the way. Now, I'm coming almost to the end, so when it gets a little bit closer, I am gonna slow it down and stop it. And I'm just gonna do one needle point at a time. Now it's done. And you see that it goes right back to center. So if I had not taped that edge down, my needle guard would have gotten caught on that and it would have torn. Now. Luckily, that was the last stitch, so it wouldn't have torn anything other than that tape. But this is it for now. I'm going to uncover the bunny, trim this little cutie booty out, and come back and do the bunny butt in another video. Thanks. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Through the magic of time lapse, I guess, I have the front cover all trimmed out cut. I'm absolutely loving doing these. These are the 18 millimeter scalloped pinking shears. I love trimming them out. I just think it, it just adds another layer of cuteness to it. But anyway, I've got the front piece done. Now I've already done the tack down and placement for the back piece. I'm getting ready to do the placement stitches for the bunny butt and feet. So I'm going to go ahead and let that stitch out. And then this, again, the same as the face, I'm going to just lay this over the top, secure it with a couple of pins, let it stitch out, and then trim it out after I'm done with some of the design elements. So there we go. It's going to stitch 
the butt and both feet at the same time. I am going to use the same piece. You could certainly use different ones if you wanted to, but I am going to use the same piece of uh, vinyl for all three little applique sections. And then again, just to remind you, I am going to use this for the bunny butt. A piece of white dishcloth. You can use faux fur. You can use another piece of vinyl. You could even do a reverse applique and have the flowers come through as the butt. However you want to do it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use this. It's just going to give it a little bit of bulk there. So, I'm not sure if you can see it. You probably can a little bit. I've got two feet and the butt shape. So I'm going to trim off my jump stitches because again I'm doing this on my single needle and it does not trim them. So I'm going to get rid of those jump stitches. And let's see. There we go. I got the jump stitches gone. I'm just going to lay this across the top. I don't waste these, believe me. I've got plenty of them over in my scrap stash over there and I use for dare for different things. So I'm just going to stitch or uh, pin this in a couple of different places. I'm not going to go crazy with the pins um, because uh, some of the stitching is going to help to hold it in place. So I've got it together. I'm going to pop it back back on the machine and let it do the tack down stitches. Um, pull that. There we go. It's going to do the tack down stitches now. We'll get rid of this jump stitch. There we go. Their thread tail there. But um, hey, Miss Pat, how are you? Pat and I grew up in the same little spot on the map called Edgerly, Louisiana. She is part of a family that we all grew up with, and well. Pat, I don't know that you grew up in Edgerly, but you married the Vincents, and they sure did. But anyway, Pat went to school with uh, one or two of my siblings, brothers and sisters, maybe. Um, hi, Debbie. How are you? So if anybody doesn't know where Edgerly it is, um, southwest Louisiana, close to the Texas line. If you just stick your finger down there between Vinton and Sulphur, that's probably going to be Edgerly. Hey Deb, uh, well I've gotten quite a few um, requests to do a video of the bunny holder. So that's what I'm doing, showing the construction of it. This is actually the fourth video. I am going to take all of the videos that I do, because you guys don't need to see me swapping in and out of the hoop or whatever, but um, I'm going to take all the videos that I do and merge them into one and pop it on the YouTube channel later. But for right now, I'm just going through and doing some quick videos of the different construction steps. So. We've got all of the bunny face and the ears done and that front holder and we're doing the bunny butt and stuff now. So I'm just going to pop this out of here. If you guys can see now, that is actually the shape. Um, the tack down stitches, you can actually see them now. I'm going to get rid of those jump tail threads. Let's see. Here we go. And then what's going to stitch next are the satin. So I do need to go ahead and trim this piece out. You guys don't need to see me do that unless you just really want to. So I am just going to pop this off of here. Since I did it all one color, I am going to have some pretty tight trimming to do between the three little pieces. Um, if you have a cutting machine, you certainly could have cut that um, on your machine if you wanted to. I don't know where my power cords are for my machines because, you know... I'm still trying to unpack, and that's not good for me two years later. But anyway, I keep thinking that somebody's going to show up, Penny, 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 Vicky, 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 and help me unpack, but, you know, they don't do it. But anyway, so I'm going to be as fast and careful at the same time as I can be so you guys aren't really staring at my machine the whole time that I'm trimming this out. I just don't want to stop the video and have to put it back on again. Um, so what I'm doing, just so you guys can see, is I'm going to go all the way around here. That is some tight stitching. So these little curved, tiny, flat, uh, they're really, really thin snips work great in these tiny curves. 
So I'm going to go ahead and trim this out. Um, the satin stitching on, on these applique pieces will cover some slight imperfections if you need it to. Um, I wouldn't leave too much on the outside, otherwise you're going to have a shadow probably. So I've got one all trimmed out here. So I'm going to finish trimming up the, around the tail and around the other side over here, or around the butt and around the other side. So if you guys um, tell me what you're working on this weekend, and if there's anything in particular you want me to try and work on this weekend, it's we're supposed to have storms all night, so when I'm done with this, I'm going to go back in the house and it's been a crazy long week, and next week is going to be even longer for me. I'm an accounting controller at car dealerships, so I'm going to have a lot of, um, we close our books out the first week of the new month for the previous month. So um, if you guys can see this, I just have these two little pieces here to trim out, and then I'm done. Insert music. Ah, oh, yeah, I wish. Hey, Sandy, Sandy, I know, I know. You can come play with the kitties all you want to because I need to find homes for the new three babies um, that are a couple, about almost three months old now. So um, we need to get Mama to the vet quickly before we figure out that she's going to have more babies. I don't mind barn kitties at all. I really don't. They help control um, the vermin population, but I just don't want to be overrun with kitties. I love kitties, but... And, Sandy Sandy, you can come cook in my new kitchen. Um, Sandy and I work for the same company, and she is one of my dearest friends. I love her to pieces, and if you guys remember uh, the baking contest I did last year, Sandy was actually the winner of that contest the year before. So, if you live in or around Arkansas... She is pretty doggone famous there for a lot of things, most recently for her baking. Um, she has a page called Sandy Bradley Bakes. But there we go. I got them all trimmed out. So we're going to go ahead and let this thing stitch the applique uh, satin stitches around. Move that thread tail out of the way. And then what's going to stitch after that are going to be the pads on the bottom of the feet. So I already have my pink. And then it's going to do the applique for the tail. And again, remember, I am using a piece of cotton craft. These are brand new, unwashed. Um, so I'm not using old scrap or anything. This is a brand new dishcloth that I just cut up to use as applique or stuffing or something. And I'm just going to double up a layer of this mermaid sheer fabric. I don't know what it's called, but... I got it at Joann's. They do sell it on the bolt. So I'm going to cover that up and just, just going to be the bunny tail when I'm done. I think that's going to bring some cute little shimmer and shine to the bunny butt, I think. Anyway. Sandy, I love you so much. If you want to um, pop in a link to your Sandy Bradley Bakes page, that would be really awesome because I think you would gain some new followers. I have some really awesome people in this group and they love creativity and they love yummy food. I know that from the baking contest before. So, hey Vicki. Wow. Okay. So, this is going to stitch out for a couple of more minutes or so. Um, I think see if I can show you what else I'm working on. Hang on just one second. I'm going to move my camera so if it looks a little weird, it's just me moving it. So I'm going to try to get over here to my computer. How's that? These are the folding. Let me move my computer back a little bit so my camera can sit still. These are my folding bookmarks. So several people tested those out today, and I am going to actually give you a sneak peek. I'm going to 
going to actually give you a couple of sneak peeks, but let me see if I can get it to pull up here on my screen. This is from Angie. Angie is in my tester group, but this is before she trimmed them all out. This is how they come out in the hoop. There's four of them in there. She did note that I have a couple of stitches that are offline just a little bit right here. I don't know if you can see that too clearly, but I need to go back and rework that corner because the lines aren't perfect in that corner. Penny stitched a couple of things out today, but here is the bookmarks on a video. Uh, I'm sorry, on one of her cookbooks. There's her bookmarks. So one side of the bookmark actually has only one layer of the vinyl or the cork or whatever you're using to make it so that when you fold it, that middle section right there folds easily and it's not going to be too bulky for you. There's also going to be the option before you put that back piece on to slip in a little piece. Um, oh, thanks, Vicki. Vicki's doing the lighthouse. We revised it again uh, based on some funny feedback. But anyway, we'll get to that later. Um, you can slip in a piece of magnetic tape as long as it's not wide. I wouldn't stitch through it. It might be okay, but I wouldn't stitch through it on my single needle. Um, but that way when you fold it over your pages like these are, it will hold it together. It'll be magnetic on the side. Then she also stitched out this fun little thing. Yes, it's another napkin holder, but it is a bacon and eggs. I think this thing is super cute. She used, it looks like, Penny, what vinyl is that for the bacon? I know it's on cork and I know that you use some glitter for the egg yolk. Um, is that the clay vinyl for the bacon? That's, that's really just super cute. But I like the way the fork came out. I really do. Even the points came out nice on this one. So I've got a few things working, guys. I know you're probably about ready to uh, be done with all of the... Let's see. Who else on video? Hi, everybody. Um, about done with the napkin holders, but I still have a pretty long list of stuff to get them on. So let me come back over here. Sorry for the wobbly. Let me put you back on here. There we go. It is um, finishing the stitching around the butt and then it's going to do the two feet. So then I'm going to put in the pink thread and do the foot pads. That's the same color pink as the shadow in the ears and on the nose. So it's going to kind of bring it in together and it also matches the pink that's on these beautiful daisies. So when that finishes up, then we'll do the tail applique. Um, if I weren't talking so much, I might be done by now, but I keep yapping. I can't help it. I just kept talk, 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 talk. So. Debbie, I do have some more Hispanic family names on my list. I think you had sent me a couple of others that I didn't get in the first round. Besides uh, Miha and Miho, there was, uh, I believe you sent me one for Godmother and Godfather. Um, I will get those on this weekend sometime. I just don't know when yet, but I will get them on as soon as I can this weekend. And then um, I did have some suggestions. I've got German names coming, Italian, and even Chinese. I'm pretty excited about the Chinese. Um, because their alphabet looks nothing like ours. Um, Cyrillic alphabet looks very similar to ours, but not a lot. Um, let's see, what else? There, I think I asked for Portuguese, which is different than Spanish. And I know there's German and Italian, French, as in from France and Canada, but we also have Cajun French, which is its own little world and own language. Um, 
there any other languages you guys want to see? I'm trying to think. Let's see what else. My list is long. Just know this. I did sign up for a craft fair in June. I have to confirm my calendar one more time because I just this week booked a vacation near Sevierville, Tennessee, up in the mountains, and I'm going to be staying in an Airstream camper for a week on the side of the mountain. And I could not be more thrilled by that. Um, one of my sisters, Rena, who is also in this group, and most of her families, her sons or grandkids, their families, and a couple friends, and then me and my son are going. Um, we're all going to be over there for a week, so that's that's pretty exciting. I haven't been to the Tennessee Hills in a long, long time. I used to live in uh, around the Atlanta area, north of Atlanta, in Smyrna and Alpharetta and Marietta area, and we used to go up to um, North Georgia quite a bit, and we'd gone to the Tennessee River Valley a few times um, just exploring and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this thread tail. Here we go. Um, so there's a lot of beautiful things to see up there. We are kind of planning our activities. I want to go gold panning. I've been gold panning before in Colorado and in North Georgia, so I'm going to go gold panning now in Tennessee. Um, I also want to do, one of my friends suggested we do something, um, Forget what she called it. I'm gonna have to look at the link she sent me, but it has to do with fireflies and the spectacular show they put on at night. So I can't wait to go. I can't wait to see that. But you know, uh, family and stuff are just kind of gathering ideas and seeing what all we can do. So this little satin stitch is on the last foot, and then we get to do the bunny butt, the tail piece. So I know I don't need this big old piece so I am going to go ahead and trim it down some. The tail is not real big on this little guy um, but I'm going to trim him down. I am going to use this fairy fabric this sheer from my Joann's and I'm going to double it up just to kind of cover up that a little bit more but I want some bulk in there. So if anybody's from around Sevierville or Chattanooga area, or Gatlinburg, somewhere around in there. Um, I'm driving from Kansas City. It's about 13 hours, 20 minutes or so. Um, so if there's anything I absolutely must see between here and there, or on the way back, let me know, and I'll see if I can't get it in and take some pictures. If anybody knows of some embroidery shops or quilt shops that are in that area, let me know, because I just might want to go visit. Yes, Debbie, it is. Um, we have a couple of other sisters. I wish that they could go, um, but they can't this year. My husband's not going this year with us, um, but I will drag him on a vacation another time. I promise. Okay, so now I'm just going to change my thread out, and we're gonna we're gonna stitch the pads on the bottom of the bunny feet. So let me put my pink thread in here. Yes my thread is in a clean, recycled, upcycled, reused vegetable can. Um, it keeps it from skipping around. It's the perfect size. It's not too tall. It's not too short. The thread stays intact where it's supposed to be. And I don't have any issues with it. I've been using that same can for four or five years now. Um, I keep saying I need to decorate it, and I never do. So, I'm just going to hold this thread tail out of the way, let it get a few stitches in, and then I'm going to cut it off just to keep it out of the way. Okay? Always stop your machine when you get close to the needle. Preferably, you want to stay away from it as much as you can. I just did that so I can clear, so I can clip off that piece. Hey Beth, I know, isn't that the most gorgeous thing ever? This is from My Punk Broidery. I've had it in my stash for a long time, and I don't think Amy has it anymore. 
but it is absolutely beautiful. Just beautiful. Penny, I know I'm going to have fun with my family, and I know I'm going to have fun sleeping in an Airstream for a week. I've got pictures of it from the travel site, and it's just really, really cool. I need a koozie. I need to make a koozie out of this. Vicki, is that what you're talking about? I got plenty of those because look, I have my bottle wrap or koozie that I made. This is done on a five by seven single hoop. And I love it. I use it every single day. I mean every single day. It fits the 20 ounce or the 16.9 ounce hopper water bottles. It fits a can. I love it. I use it every single day. I always know it's mine. Well, Sandy, I'm going to tell you a little trick. I have a magnifying glass, but I don't need one with this machine. I have an automatic needle threader. I just line the thread up and put it in one little hook, and there's a lever on the side of the machine that I push down, and it threads the needle for me. If the automatic needle threader ever breaks, I am going to have to get out the magnifying glass times four, I'm afraid. So, it is almost done with foot number one, and it's going to come over here and stitch this side, over here of this other foot, and then it'll do the applique on the bunny butt. So, in all honesty, these are easy, pretty fast, uncomplicated designs, even though they seem like they might have... Um, a lot of color stops, that's only to force your machine to stop so you can move to the next section. On applique, you generally have three steps. You have placement, tack down, and then a final stitch. And a final stitch on these happens to be a satin. You can have a final stitch that's a zigzag, or you can have a bean stitch, um, a blanket stitch. There's several different ways that you can finish an applique. <laughs> yes, Sandy, you need an embroidery machine. I'll come to Little Rock and show you how to use it. I want to come see your daffodils. I really do. This machine is a Brother PE800. I don't know that you can see that. Uh, the name is down here. This is the newer version of the PE770. I like the improvements they made from one to the other. I have a color screen. I can actually see what's going on. This one has a stitch timer. It tells me that based on the number of stitches and the speed that I have my machine set at, that it stitches this, this entire hoop out in 20 minutes. Now, obviously it takes a little bit longer when you have to unhoop it, secure fabric or vinyl, put it back together and stuff like that. But, Penny, what are you going to grab? Penny, you're so goofy. I hope you feel better. Sandy, I will make it to Little Rock one day. I absolutely will. I miss you. I haven't been down there to see you guys in quite a while. But you need to come to Kansas City too, girly. And you need to come when you can come to my house and see my kitchen. Alright, this is almost done and I'm going to just leave the pink thread in here for a minute because now it's going to come and stitch the placement for the tail and the pink thread in there is just going to let me see that a little bit better than trying to stitch it in blue. I can see it, but this is just going to give me a little bit more uh, visual contrast to the color of the vinyl. So, now I am going to just pop this off the hoop, off the machine I mean, so you can see where the outline is. And I do have a couple of jump stitches down here on the foot pads between the middle of the pad and the toe pads. Uh, this is 
Let me trim that piece out. There we go. Um, this is going to be for the bunny butt. Now, again, I'm going to use this. This is larger than I need, but I'm going to tape it out of the way. And I'm also going to tape this piece of fairy fabric over it, or mermaid fabric, or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what it is. Out of the way. I am going to put a couple of pins just up in the top corners just to give it a little bit of extra stability. Um, I do have grown up internet now. If you guys have not noticed, I have not lost signal. This is an amazing thing. When we moved out here, there's no cable and there's no fiber internet and Verizon at the time did not offer home internet. I love the bunny napkin holder, Sandy. I have two of them now. This is going to be the second one that I have. If you want one, I'll be happy to send you one. Pick out which one you want. Um, let's see. We have now hardwired fiber internet, and it is amazing. All right, I am just going to put a piece of tape on the bottom of this. Okay. So I have two pins just at the top to hold it out of the way. It is outside of the stitch line. So here's the stitch line for the shape itself. The bunny butt is right in here. And I did put one little piece of tape on the bottom just to hold that out of the way. So I'm going to change my thread. Sandy, that magic is coming up again where I can thread a needle without a magnifying glass. So let's get that done. So through um, our electrical co-op, they signed up with a company called Connect or Connects On, I think. And from what I understand, they're all over the South and Southeast. They've been doing a lot of work in rural areas, trying to bring us to the same kind of internet. Um, and I have five gig hardwired internet here. Um, now I do have a Wi-Fi mesh network because my building is not connected to the house hardwired but I am running off of Wi-Fi on this video and that was completely impossible a month ago my videos would just drop after two or three minutes they would buffer I couldn't really get a very good signal at all hold on one second let this do its little thing I couldn't get a very good signal at all I'm going to stop that so the day that they came out, and let me tell you, it was Keystone Comp, but the day they came out, I came home that night, and my husband and I ran speed tests on the computer, on our phones, and we stream movies off of Prime Video and Netflix. No buffering at all, none. So I knew that I needed to come out here and do a video for you guys, and I know that y'all have been Yes, I do have a multi-needle Debbie. Um, I know that y'all have been wanting a video for these the bunny um, but so I figured this was a good time to try my grown up internet. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this out because it is time for the satin stitching. I only have two color stops left in this design. One of them is the satin stitching around the bunny tail and the other is around the um, holder itself. So let me get this out of the way. Okay, so this fairy fabric, this sheer fabric from Joann's, I could almost tear it, but I don't want to pull the stitches. Um, but it cuts very, very easily. So I'm not cutting the terry cloth at the same time. Uh, the terry cloth I really do need to cut by itself. It is very thick compared to this little fairy fabric, and I don't. I don't want it to get uneven or bunched up or anything like that. So I am going to be really careful with this and get rid of it. So now that I have grown up internet, the next thing to work on is getting my building actually organized, getting it set up so that I can have more of a studio feel to it. Um, oh, speaking of studio, get this guys. I had a phone consultation today with a business attorney and I've been running this business for a while but I think I need to 
take it to the next level get some trademarks in place for my business name and get some uh, an LLC set up and things like that so I had a consultation this morning my husband and I are going to talk over the options over this weekend and I'm going to have another um, phone call uh, with the attorney Monday or Tuesday of next week and we're going to get that ball rolling so stay tuned for some more uh, information on that so if you guys hadn't noticed most everything that I do has my chaotic at the beginning of it so we're trying to come up with an umbrella name that would encompass a lot of different things not just embroidery because I don't do just embroidery I do acrylic painting I did um, the baking contest I absolutely loved doing that and um, I plan to do that again my total dream because you know I have a beautiful new kitchen in my house but it's not a commercial kitchen and I do have animals in my house so I couldn't have a commercial licensed kitchen in my house with animals there so I can have one outdoors um, for that. There we go. Um, or in a totally separate building or maybe rent a space in town so, okay girls, stop. Y'all are fussing at me about that multi-needle. I gotta find my power cords. But anyway, um, I will get, I am going to do a little bit more trimming. Okay, so I did trim the terry cloth, but there's a little bit of edge still around it. And now that it's got several little rows of stitching around it, I can actually get to some more of it without snipping the vinyl or snipping the tack down thread. So I'm just going to trim it up in a couple of more spots. There we go. That's all I needed to do. So since I stopped and I forced my machine to cut the thread, I now I'm going to go back about 10 stitches. My machine allows me to go 1, 10, or 100, forward or backward. And I'm just going to let that continue on and it's going to go 10 stitches back from where I cut it off. That way it goes back over where it already was and it, and it locks in that stitch that it cut earlier. So y'all just need to stay tuned because I'm going to have some business things coming up, coming my way soon and I'm going to try to take this baby to the next level. Um, I did buy the quilt creating software, the EQ8, so I want to try and get into that as well. Um, you know, I don't sleep a whole lot, so this is something to occupy me. I need to be occupied. Um, you can ask my husband, I don't really sit still, and if, I'm, if I am sitting still, I'm doing something on the computer, working on designs for you guys, or doing research creating something. I'm, I'm busy all the time. So, this little tail is as cute as it can possibly be with that, that mermaid or fairy wing shimmery stuff over it. It's really cute. This is my stash back here. You guys can't really see it, but that's my stash of scraps there in the back. Oh, that's one of them. I have several, but, uh, okay. This is almost done with the satin. And then I need to add the back piece to the holder. I am so thrilled to have the video working. Girls, yeah, if y'all come up here, y'all can help me find the power cords and we can certainly use the multi-needle as much as you want. Come on. And I have a cameo. I have a big cricket, and I have a tiny cricket, and I have a mug press, and I have a this, and I have a that, and I have a everything. So, come on, we'll play. That is really very pretty vinyl. I love it. It's gorgeous. I, I hope that Amy has it. She has other florals, but I haven't seen this one in a bit. She might have it, and I just missed it, but I have to check the website. Oh my god, this tail is so cute! Okay, so now there's nothing to fold down on this one because there's nothing sticking up like there was on the ears. 
If you remember, we taped the ears down like crazy earlier to stitch that. There's nothing to fold down on this. So really all I have to do is apply the back. I am going to clean up a few of these little threads on the back just because I don't like the messy part. Um, it does not hinder the use of the cover in any way, shape, or form, but I just don't like the look of them. So I'm going to get rid of them. There are some that are kind of long just because they're going from one section of the bunny foot to the tail and back and forth. So here we go. I'm going to secure this in place with a couple of pins from the front side, stitch it out and trim it out and take a bunch of pictures. Thank you guys so much. I will take a whole bunch of pictures and post them on the site. And then I'm going to merge the videos into one single video. Thanks for watching.